Welcome back, Trinidad and Tobago. We're in the final segment of today's show, and uh, we're going to speak with uh, Dr. Vishnu Raghunath as we continue to look at the political developments. We started off with the opposition as well as Dr. Winford James, and now we return uh, to the conversation. Last week, Wednesday, I had the opportunity to have the last interview with uh, Minister Lahunt in his capacity as the Vice Chair of the Recovery Committee, as well as in his capacity of Public Utilities Minister. Interestingly, he was very proud of the IDB loan and the plans of restructuring. According to one newspaper report, it seems as though this plan was not sitting well with the entire cabinet. Let's share with you what he had to say and then we'll get Dr. Raghunov to give us his thoughts on the overall impact of this latest development. It is really unfortunate sometimes, Hema, that you know, have all these conversations and as a Minister of Public Utilities, I want to let people know also out there that we are mindful of our responsibility with regard to water and that we have developed and we are developing as part of even this plan is also a plan for the enabling environment and ensuring that water and the importance of water too long sure. i have found that we have been hearing these messages about water for all and it's not being a reality will it be a reality under your tenure I think, I mean, my, my, well, I think my tenure is coming very close to an end, but I could assure you that there, will, there is a plan in place, a workable plan, a plan that has been sanctioned by the IDB, a plan that has been sanctioned by a number of international players. And I feel that uh, it is definitely within our reach sure. and something that we could do. So there is hope and there is a light at the end of the tunnel. There you see, that was the last interview that Robert LeHunt did, and that was last Wednesday. Dr. Ragnath joins us via Zoom. Dr. Ragnath, good morning. How are you? Good morning. I'm fine, thank you. A lot, of the, uh, you know, a lot of things have happened over the last 48 hours. What do you think is going to be the impact of this resignation? Well, basically, the impact of this resignation, as it stands right now, is that the Prime Minister will find a new Minister of uh, Public Utilities. What is in... Interesting here is that Mr. Lee Hunt has decided that he's going to stay with the PNM. He's going to continue to work with the PNM. I understand that he was even at the screening process on, on Friday evening. So in that context, he continues to, to work with the PNM to make sure that uh, the PNM stands a good chance at retaining government in the, uh, at the elections, and we'll take it from there. Is the Public Utilities Ministry blight in itself? Because there have been so many changes in that ministry, uh, re ministers. So what is so difficult? Are we seeing the case of unmanageable public utilities companies? Because if we go by the report, this all stemmed from the minister's plan to introduce a, a metering, a water metering system. Uh, according to the reports in the newspaper, uh, the PM and other members of the cabinet said they cannot afford water rights at this time, and I'm assuming this time being the election year. So is it that this, this ministry is so difficult to manage that proper decisions will never be made in it? It's not a matter that the ministry is difficult to manage. The, the issue itself with the, that ministry is that that ministry is dealing with critical issues, people's issues. And in dealing with people's issues, you have to be careful of and mindful of the politics that will impact upon. So in, in the context of saying that, yes, water is life, everybody will talk about water and, and that you need water and you cannot do without water. The question is, how do you price water? How do you charge your water? How do you ensure that people get a reliable supply? And it is in that context that that is where political decisions come to the fore rather than proper managerial and administrative decisions. And that, I think, is the challenge that uh, Minister Lehant would have faced um, because he wanted to have an admin, uh, a managerial decision that will impact upon the society and the, the company but, first, but if, for instance, we had to mix the politics in there, well, of course, the politics overwhelms everything else, particularly so as we are in an election year. Looking at the, the positions Minister Lahunt held, I mean, he obviously seems he's an experienced banker. He always was, and I keep saying it, uh, in terms of his cabinet position and the ministerial portfolio, he was one of the most approachable, accessible, and unlike most politicians, had no arrogance with him. So he also seemed to have been very close to the prime minister. He was given very key appointments, not just in the party structure, but also he's the vice chair of the recovery committee. Is this going to have any effect at all about the stability of the party? One editorial saying that there are cracks in Whitehall. Well, clearly there are cracks. 
clearly the factor of the matter is simply that uh, you would have divisions within the, the cabinet and it is for the prime minister to manage those divisions. Now, um, I, if we are to, to, to read what we are hearing in the, and look, seen in the media, uh, we have to say that those cracks are some things that the prime minister will have to deal with and deal with decisively if he is to make sure that the party remains on, on a firm footing for the election. Uh, as we move into that election period, however, uh, there are concerns that people will have, not only within the cabinet, but within the party at, at large, as to how to deal with some of those issues and whether certain people have the prime minister's air as opposed to other people and, and all the other issues that come down in there and dovetail into there. All of those issues have to be dealt with. So the prime minister has to be maneuvering in a, in a rough, turbulent area where he's have to, he'll have to take his party into an election, but he has to also try to, to manage all the disagreements and those dif disagreements would only be natural eh? but of course some of them could be easily resolved some of them are man-made and for all intents and purposes uh some of them would need hard decisions by the prime minister and political leader considering what we're seeing from the people's national movement do you think we can expect an earlier election Initially, people thought December, but uh, they seem to be screening at a very, uh, at a pace. Definitely, I am expecting the election to be at, uh, in August, because the, the prior to um, what, oh, prior to what the Prime Minister would have said last week, that a Christmas time election is nothing new. The fact of the matter is simply this, that if the government has to go into uh, a later election, they have to pass a budget. And that is the, the, the crunch that they will really have to face because whereas they have gotten and they have utilized monies from the Heritage and Stabilization Fund as all, as all the other various loans that they would have gotten now in this COVID-19 period, the fact is that this is not going to last forever. And this money that they have right now that they have access to, they could spend that money and that, I mean, we can't get away from it. This is an election year. Government is going to do all that it can to win an election. It is going to spend as much as it can now. And we have the, okay, there is a facility or there are facilities now that allows the government economic uh, leverage and they're going to use that leverage to get money in, to spend money. All of that is going to come before the election. Once you get into September and you now have to pass a new budget question, where is the money going to come from? Particularly so with depressed energy prices, particularly so when you cannot simply go back to the HSF um, and, and take out as much as you want. So the point about it is that we're going to have to make whoever comes into government come September, October, they're going to have to make some hard financial decisions. And it is in that context that I am suggesting that elections will be prior to that budget. And I, at the rate at which the PNM is going now, clearly by the end of May or by middle of June, they will have all their candidates in place. And that will give them sufficient time to give notice, uh, dissolve parliament and call the election before the September the 8th. And I'm looking at September the 8th the Prime Minister has always said that he's going to call elections when they are due. He's going to, he's, he's going to try and keep within his five-year term and call the elections before that five-year term is up. I, you know, I, I tend to agree with you on this one, Doctor, because I, I looked at the, the pace that they are moving to select candidates, and I do think probably within, by the end of the month they will have their entire slate ready to hit the ground. Now, speaking about hitting the ground at a time of COVID, we still do not know what the world is going to look like and what social interactions would look like. What will an election look like? Let's talk about rallies, let's talk about meetings. Joe Biden, you see, they, they had to build studios within their homes. Uh, there are no mass meetings. Debates are not being held in the conventional way that they would. How would this shape an election in the next one minute? What would you say our election is going to look like? 
to be totally different to what we have had in the past. Um, social media, the electronic media are going to be the, the, the only means necessary to have uh, political meetings and rallies. Uh, we will not see the, the campaigns and the crowds and whatever else. Of course, it's going to save the parties money um, where they would not have to buy all these jerseys and whatever else, but then they will have to spend the money in the media houses. So media houses like yours will benefit. <laughs> Doctor, thank you so much for uh, for your time this morning and for sharing your expert opinion on that. And that's Dr. Vishnu Raghunatsa talking a little bit about the resignation of Dr. Lahunt, about the possibility of an early election and also what would a campaign look like in a time of COVID. I'm Emma Ramke, soon we've come to the end of today's show. On behalf of the entire team, I wish you a safe and blessed day. Remember to be safe, wear your mask if you're in the public space and do have a safe and blessed one. I'll see you tomorrow morning.